Hi, I'm Hyun Park, Chief Analyst at Amalgam Insights, and today I'm looking at the biggest announcement in FinOps, Cloud FinOps, Aptio completing its integration with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So why is this interesting? Well, let's dig in a little bit. About this announcement, Aptio announced full support for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure usage and cost data within the Aptio Cloudability product which is an upgrade on the existing OCI integration that was announced in June 2023. With this integration, there are three key categories of functionality that are interesting here. First, we've got cost reporting, budgeting, and forecasting to go along with existing support for Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Interesting there to see that we will now be able to do better comparative uh, visualizations of reporting, budgeting, forecasting across these four clouds in what is increasingly a multi-cloud world. Second of all, we've now got business mapping for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to support cost allocations. So for your cost centers, your profit centers, your GL, your projects, uh, your products, uh, however your allocation for cloud services is, uh, this will help to be able to allocate Oracle Cloud infrastructure in the same way as other clouds may already be managed without having to think all that much about the actual uh, structure and recreating it uh, within Oracle. Third of all, you've got unit economic support for uh, cost of goods sold, transactions, and unit of delivery, units of delivery to support profitability. So this means now we can align Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to profits uh, in a better way uh, because we already have this existing cloudability structure and now we can use that as an overlay for all of our Oracle Cloud Infrastructure spend as well. And this is at a time when Oracle Cloud is uh, starting to stand up as a fourth cloud that is relevant in the enterprise world. So why does this matter for the FinOps community, for those of you managing cloud and thinking about cloud costs on a day-to-day -day basis? First of all, as I just said, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is now a major cloud. It's established itself as a fourth cloud option for global enterprises based on total cost of ownership and its breadth of capabilities. They've definitely done a lot of work to create a global footprint, as well as putting a variety of services, uh, both on the platform as a service, as well as a software as a service layer at, to go along with infrastructure as a service capabilities. And of course, the Oracle database and uh, related data management capabilities underpins the importance of Oracle, Oracle Cloud. Uh, those of us who have Oracle database uh, workloads uh, know how important it is to be able to keep those uh, workloads running and to be able to support that on an ongoing basis. Uh, there's obviously a lot of work being done from a digital transformation perspective to move towards the cloud and to maintain scalability. Uh, Oracle obviously is going to use all of these uh, capabilities to its advantage in building out Oracle Cloud spend. But also Oracle Cloud has frankly been a cheaper option for a lot of storage, compute, and networking op, uh, uh, capabilities that are typically done on the public cloud. So it is, uh, there's gonna be a lot of incentive to move into the Oracle Cloud. And now Aptio provides additional visibility to see how to compare those clouds. So IBM Aptio based view of uh, Oracle Cloud in infrastructure also makes it easier for enterprises to make these apples to apples comparisons across budgeting, forecasting and migration. Uh, when you're looking at these resources and trying to figure out what is best for what, we are increasingly seeing that there is differentiation between the public clouds. Uh, we used to say, oh, you're just gonna use one cloud all the time because uh, you're just an Amazon shop or you're just a Microsoft shop. But we're starting to see there are advantages when you want to use uh, the Oracle database or if you're trying to do machine learning or if you're trying to do uh, various types of software-based workloads that you're going to choose the cloud that is most cost efficient or is most reliable or fits best with your existing governance and security needs. So this IBM Aptio based view uh, that includes Oracle along with the other three major uh, public clouds is now going to provide a lot uh, of, visit, of improved business visibility from a financial perspective. And it may frankly create some pressure to move towards one or another cloud that has a relatively interesting financial perspective 
or a capability uh, that the company that your company may be interested in. So this support also potentially provides IBM with greater visibility to Oracle workloads, a subject to user client uh, user client opt-in, obviously. But uh, it would be it's going to be interesting to see uh, how many IBM clients uh, using Aptio are going to want that greater visibility to uh, benchmarking and to a relative use of Oracle uh, relative to how uh, other clients are using this. And it might be interesting for IBM to be able to use that data back in return to make more Oracle-centric co contracts and to be able to support uh, Oracle clients uh, seeking IBM uh, consulting capabilities or IBM services uh, in other areas. Uh, since uh, at the end of the day, uh, IBM is uh, going to want to make things as easy as possible for its multi-million dollar clients, uh, regardless of what foundational infrastructure they are using. So the big takeaways here, twofold. One is I think there's going to be larger returns on investment for Oracle Cloud infrastructure customers, uh, both being able to invest more in uh, appropriate Oracle Cloud infrastructure services, as well as being able to align those investments more directly to the projects and the services and the actual profit making initiatives associated with the business. So uh, when you improve your cost and you improve your return, obviously higher return on investment at the end of the day. Second of all, I think from the IBM side with the recent IBM acquisition of Aptio, there's opportunities for IBM to build bigger contracts based on Oracle Cloud infrastructure and not necessarily having to rely as much on uh, Amazon or Microsoft or Google. Uh, I expect Am uh, IBM to be a fair player uh, across the enterprise cloud world, but obviously with Oracle's current advantages from a cost perspective, uh, there are reasons to want to build in Oracle as a uh, a public cloud provider for a variety of different contracts and uh, infrastructure use cases. So that's what I see. I'm curious, what's your opinion, good or bad for Oracle, IBM, and the other hyperscalers and FinOps players? Uh, let me know in the comments or engage us directly at Amalgam Insights. Feel free to send over an email or uh, send over a briefing request, uh, depending on what kind of uh, discussion you want to have. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Again, this is Hyun Park, a Chief Analyst from Amalgam Insights, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say.